Mr. Jim Rock will lead us in our invocation. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Father, which art in heaven, Dear Lord God, it's once again that we come before you in your presence to thank you for all your many blessings you bestowed upon the city of Delta. Dear Lord God, we ask that you continue to bless our mayor, our city council, our city manager, our city attorney, and the department heads on tonight as we are gathered together to make to continue to make decisions for the betterment of all the citizens of Delta. And in everything we do, we pray you be kept to give your name the glory, your name the honor, and your name the praise. It is in the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Everybody here this evening. Thank y'all for coming. Um, we need to make a slight modification to the agenda. Uh, we've got an executive session of a personnel matter. We're going to also have to add a contractual matter. Also, okay. all in favor? Opposed? Uh, approval of the minutes of the regular schedule, May 11, 2015, regular schedule meeting, and also the June 1, 2015, budget workshop. All in favor? Opposed? Uh, I've just got a, just a couple minutes. I uh, just kind of want to review a little bit of what the budget workshop was in case you didn't and you can get what I don't. Uh, as far as the budget, those of you that weren't here, I think the general fund, we're looking at about a 2% increase over last year. Yes. Uh, the general fund budget this coming fiscal year will be a pad over $5 million, $5 million Exact water sewer funds will be about 3.6 million. Combine the two, about 8.6. Uh, the budget includes a $500 pay increase for each employee. Um, total cost of that pay increase is roughly 34,000 on the general fund side, about nine, nine and a half, about 9,500 on the water sewer side. Um, Going to be a slight increase in the, the garbage rates. Uh, residential garbage carts are going from 21.52 to 21.95, so it's about a 40 cent increase. Two percent CPI adjusted increase on the on the water and sewer. I think Lynn gave an example of 5,000 gallons. If you use your current rate, would be about 35.66 which would increase less than a dollar to 36.35. Some big ticket items we were looking at are air packs for the fire department. It's been decided on purchase 10 additional air packs at approximately $65,000. Uh, new car for a code department. 10,000 for a front loader for a garbage truck. And 30,000 into recreation fund a recreation department, which 15,000 of that is for more, and another 15 for additional equipment for our parks. Uh, two cent hospitality fund, which funds a lot of our stuff, from, obviously from a recreation standpoint, has continued to be strong. Uh, we have a forty four hundred sixty-seven thousand dollar balance in there, with one more month go into fiscal year. I think that will even get stronger with additional restaurants we got coming and also the refinancing we did on that, that bond. Uh, we'll, we'll save you some on. So. I'd like to make a note to the department heads if y'all would help plan the council on what y'all think we'll do to help the city as far as the budget. We can certainly use part of those savings for y'all. Um, I ask you to please get involved. Last thing I'd like to close with is remember um, Mr. E.C. Carr. I think E.C. had uh, he passed away last week. I think he was 18 years on council, close to that. I think he served as mayor for Tim. Um, our thoughts and prayers be with the E.C. Carr family. That Friday, that funeral was last Friday. Also, won't remember Bobby lost his brother uh, Gerald. Uh, Gerald did a lot in the recreation department, also for kids out here school-age kids with football and all kinds of things. And Gerald was a couple years younger than me. I played football with Gerald, a very good person, good athlete, but a better person. So maybe we, uh, we also lift you up in our prayers also. And uh, with Glenn, that's 
that's all I have. Well, I'll follow up on, on your overview of the proposed budget, which you have first reading here shortly in our, in our meeting. Based on our public, uh, on our workshop last week, we discussed the air packs in the fire department. We had a number in there, I think $57,000 to purchase 10. On Tuesday, the fire chief got some bids to purchase, well, let me back up, we had $57,000 in the budget for air packs to purchase 10, but the numbers that we got were based on 30 air packs. So Keith uh, got in contact with those three vendors on Tuesday. They resubmitted their bids. We want to add $8,000 to the capital purchase on the 10 air packs. We went from 57 to, uh, to 65,000. The lowest bid is, is 65000 the highest bid is 70000 And then I think there's, what, $100 difference, Keith? Yeah. The more lowest in the middle bid. Yeah, so. Who are you going with? Well, we're looking at MSA and you know, on ISI. i got to go down to the conference meeting. We'll look at those two and talk to some people and try to see which of those two are the best. they got the best so I'll look at them. We'll make a decision which one's the But in your packet that you got on Friday with the proposed budget that's got those changes you know, already involved in that. Um, if you take the time or have taken the time to look at your actual monthly financial reports, you should be around the 92% mark on, on revenues and in expenditures. Our two biggest ticket items on the general fund side and revenues is business license and franchise fees. We're still waiting on a franchise fees basically from Duke Energy. It should be here this, sometime this month. It usually comes mid to late June. Business license, we're still waiting there. I know Mr. Jim Wright has been busy doing business licenses. We're waiting on some more of those and from the permits or the business license payments that the Municipal Association collects on our behalf. We have not received that as of yet that we anticipate to receive by the end of this month. I also put in your packet a copy, or Lynn put in your packet a copy of a contract for Kenneth Cobby Company, the auditors that we've been using uh, this since the late 90s. Based on what I've read and what I remember when he submitted this to me back in March, nothing has really changed based on the previous contract. I think it is in there for a three-year period. It's, it spells out you know, what that company will do with our audit. I think it costs 19000 I think around nineteen twenty thousand dollars each year, uh, and then depending on if he has to do additional work that's not in the normal day-to-day -day auditing purposes, there could be some additional charges. So, what was y'all's desire to be with the contract for the auditor? Somewhere in that ballpark yesterday. Is he going on a, uh, <coughs> is he asking for a contract or a year by year basis? It is a three year commitment. That's what we usually do as a three year. June 30th to, yes sir. Is that an increase? No, it's about the same. Is that the market? That I don't know. That's probably about what we've paid for the last three years. I mean, I'd hate to lose them. But at the same time, <coughs> we probably have to look and see what the market is. Okay. I'm fine with them. I don't know the cost of, of the costs. Um, and uh, the information we give them, if you go give them that, and I like a opinion. And it seems like we have to ask him for an opinion. And he's reluctant to give that until I read it. And I read where he's not going to give an opinion on it. I want to be sure that, you know, 
That's what we pay him for. I like his opinion to some extent. I know we're in good shape. No co compare the Clifford students. Uh, we aren't running deficits, but that's all I ask. Uh, when you say when you ask for an opinion, well, you know, I, I almost felt like I, I, I dug it to some extent, and I know I see Phil too at times. Uh, <coughs> where are weak points at, strong points at, and what what are your concerns with this and all this with this? And I don't just to go. Yeah. Well, we need to just, this is all I. Case in point, from you know, how much do we need water and sewage as a as a uh, depreciation? Number. What's a safe number for us to have with, you know, twenty million dollars in assets? You know, what kind of depreciation money should we have put away to, you know, maintain this emergency? I've talked to them about that, and we we discussed. I'm not being critical, but yeah, you know, and, but if you wanted a true number, you'd have to get engineers involved to get into your pipe, your length of your pipe that you've got in the city, and all that. I mean. We could tell you ten million. We'd need ten million in there. You know. That's fine. To start off, we talked about that. He and I talked. The only about problem that. with that is, is that we're going to have to have some. And I don't want to spend a hundred thousand dollars figuring it out. But you'd have to have some justification mm -hmm. when we talk to Purdue about trying to fund that ten million. Normally, your pipe is fifty years. Mm -hmm. But this pipe we just last year didn't last that. So that's our appreciation schedule. Is on the pipes like this. What I'll do is I will, tomorrow we'll try to get some, two more quotes and go from there. They'll be out for you. Because, yeah, they would be scheduled to start working sometime in July doing stuff for us. At least that's what the auditor yeah. we have right now. They would start collecting okay, I'm not that happy with them, but I yeah, understand. I'd hate to be paying twice the market. Understand. You know, I will we'll follow up with that. What that may be. That's not. A, and if what we'll do is try to have that answer. We've got a. I've got a meeting scheduled with council for second reading on our budget, the 29th, I believe it is, of June, whatever the last Monday in June is, and we can bring that back at that time. We'll have that information. Also, in your packet, there was a letter that was addressed to the mayor. PD Regional Transit Authority, excuse me, Ms. Uh, Nancy Finkley has represented the city on that transit authority since day one from our understanding. Her term expires uh, this week. Her term is up for another two or three years, I think it says, uh, for another three-year term. I have talked to Ms. Finkley. She's willing if council is at the pleasure of having her to serve the next two the next three years on this uh, PD Regional Transit Authority. I make a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 The last thing I have is from the ATAX committee. Janet met with the local ATAX committee last week. There was $36,383 in that account that has to be used to promote tourism at the local level. How much? $36,383. The Dillon County Theater requested $20,000. The ATAX committee recommends approval for $15,883.41. PD Tourism uh, requested $10,000. The committee recommends that they receive $10,000. And then the City of Dillon Recreation Department requested $10,500. And they recommend approval for $10,500. Now these three entities are the same three entities that apply for a year in and year out. What does the theater company use their money for? Um, do you know what the theater is using their money for? Um, I guess for productions or for costs. Yeah. Productions? <coughs> they had a lot of changes here, Johnny. Brought the 
in my opinion, Jim Crow. Oh, wait a minute. Not, I'm talking about this, the, uh, the Dillon House. And yeah, the, the Dillon House not, didn't apply to freedom. They, they yeah. don't have any... Um, They've gone request. through a lot of channels, yes. So total request was for 40500 but the committee recommends $36,383.41. What do we normally get from? We've got an increase of $10,000. Is that what it is? Pardon? It is an increase of $10,000. Last year, we gave about the same amount. Same thirty-five thousand Between the three. Did the theater did they request $20,000 last year? They probably did. That's usually their normal. And what happens is each each entity has to present a budget to let them know what they want to spend the money on. And then they make a recommendation that's left up to you seven to either agree with the recommendation or disagree with the recommendation. Do we request accountings at the end of the year? You don't have that news to folks here. No, we don't get that. Now we have to submit to the state, don't you? Yeah. We have to submit to the state what they spend the money on. That's what it's talking about. Yeah. But oh, yeah. Uh, we do that. But the state and does the audit. If the state sees something that they don't like, they need to come in and say, you know, this, this is not a provable purchase or justify this purchase. So this has been through the tax committee? Yes. That's all I have at this point. Okay, um, let me follow up on something I forgot about. I talked to you or asked you about it a couple, four or five weeks ago. And what's the status of the house that burned on me? Letters have been submitted to the property owner there in their last days of either gaining permits or it goes on the demolition or condemn or the demolition. demolition. Yeah. So the owner has been contacted, has been sent a certified letter. You've got 60, 90 days. What is it? We're on that last advertisement. Okay. okay. It's Thursday. Have they followed up with you? Or? No, sir. No, sir. So I, I'm going to imagine that's going to be on the, the list, too. And what's the date we're holding the state baseball? July. starts July 17th. <coughs> it runs from July 17th through following Thursday, which I think is the 23rd. 17th through the 23rd? Yes, sir. Well, I'm glad we got that. So that's a really good thing for it. Okay. Um, citizens report, anything anybody would like to bring our attention to up here tonight? Uh, with nothing, we go to unfinished business. Ordinance 15-5 sell a property owned by the city of Dillon. And this is the, the lot we own behind King's Pizza. Um, and is this the second reading? This would be the second reading, yes sir. Second final reading. Anybody here want to comment on that? Any questions, any concerns? What's the sale price? 40, 42,000. Plus whatever legal cost is for closing and things of that nature. None of that's our cost. I have one comment here. Um, I was wondering what we plan on doing with the money once we sell it. We're we going to put it back in the general fund or what we plan on doing with the money? I thought we talked about um, buying that land around the business uh, or the yeah, that's, that's a possibility. I don't think anything's been decided on the money. I mean, we just, I know that was a suggestion. There, there's nothing in the ordinance that, that says where the money, if the money would be earmarked. Um, if it's not earmarked, it would just go into the general fund account. You see, I've got, I've got probably uh, three, maybe three phone calls over there. Um, I just want to be clear. Can y'all help me? Uh, my recollection on this is wrong. That property had been up for bid 
before. Um, the one there was a structure on. That's when there was a structure on. Yeah, I couldn't recall. There was a structure. We had an offer of Maggie. Do you remember? No. I won't think either ten or ten or twelve thousand dollars, if I remember correctly. And it's been for sale for approximately three years. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in that ballpark. With with no tape, with no, to my knowledge, not money no. that. I just don't want any questions on it. Everybody had an opportunity for that. I could see where people would want it, where they need a green space perhaps, but that's why we're here to make those decisions. Um, I have a motion. I'll make a motion. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? New business, it's 1506, adopting the municipal budget, which we just discussed. Now, let me make a, a little change for that also. You mentioned the general fund, uh, five million and some, some change, as we like to say. But once you add golf and wellness center into that, it brings it to 5.5 million, which is it mentions it in your uh, budget ordinance. And then the actual water and sewer is 3.6 million, uh, 95 meals, which we've been at the same millage rate for 20 years, seems like. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Well, I was just bringing back the figures we discussed yeah, in the budget. That's right. Shop. That's for real. Uh, summarizing that. Um, it is unbalanced. We aren't running deficit. We aren't using reserve funds. And like that. So we, we are um, um, one question before we get to a vote. The volunteer fire department, you said you were going to talk to the fire chief. It would be, Keith gave me that information last week. Put that equation down. If you increase, and I'm just using average numbers, um, before I give you that number. Uh, Keith, do you know what your average annually? Fire calls? Yeah. And we can also include, when we say fire calls, what we pay out, but on numbers. That includes fire <coughs> and, and training and meetings, correct? Yeah, about, not, not counting the guys across town, we're looking at about 200 calls. Okay. And, and if you use, I used 100 calls. Uh, if you use that, you've got, I think, four people who are categorized as firefighter one. You got this. I think it's 12 or 13. That's, I've got eight firefighter twos and four or five firefighter heads. So that's 12 people. If you added $5 uh, to each one of those per call, uh, somewhere in this $5,000, $6,000 one. And that's based on 100. So he's talking 200, 10, 10 to $12,000. <coughs> and we've got 17 that's going to get in the firefighter one course. It's eligible. So so if it's going to be this year, first, or next year, we'll, we should have a majority, should be minimum five or five more. So we're probably looking at, out of 17, we may have 10 or 12 more that by uh, first year, if they get in class, could be five or five more. So it could be upwards to 15 to 20,000 additional dollars. But if we go ahead, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I think that's something that we really, we really need to look at for next year's budget. I think it's something that is a good thing. I think we need to encourage those firefighters to improve their skills because they put their lives on the line every time they do it. But I, I think it's a little late to be talking about it for this budget period, but we really should be putting it into the conversation for next year's budget. And well, another question would be, is, I think you realize that uh, we spend roughly $70,000 volunteer firemen pay. Uh, of that 70000 I don't know the, the breakdown of the actual dollar amounts, but each one of them or some of them spend a night at, on the west side every I night, got, correct? I think we got about nine guys now to stay across town on Which location. We pay them per night, what, $60? Four fire colleges. Yes, $60 a night to stay at that fire station. Do we want to include that? Into that, that's yeah. 
I don't think that ought to be part of their extra pay. That doesn't need to be increased because they've got extra training. I mean, we're not we're paying them to sleep there, not to to fire. They're actually off. acting as an engineer. That's what you're doing. So if they go to the call, get paid for calls well. So right. I mean, we don't need to pay them extra to sleep there. No, I think that should stay just six dollars. Right. I think that's for freight hours, half for eight hours, or not. But I, I don't think that we really need to try to push that through in this year's budget. I think it's something we need to study and look at for, for next year. If you lost five firemen, volunteer fire, five firemen, would it be difficult to replace those? I mean, do you have people coming wanting to, to do this service, or you got to go recruit them, or what? We don't have many. We got. We probably got two or three now that's got out that's putting to get on. Uh, we don't have them knocking out the door when we volunteer. <coughs> What's your requirements to be on that? You've got a city fire department, you hit 21 years of age, um, stay within the city limits and get uh, get the firefighter class. You gotta be certified to get on, but get the firefighter class. Say it's one year, but we're trying to get to the guys. We got one right now that's not certified. We have one in the county. Try to get them in that. We're getting ready to host 1152 probably first of August, so one's not certified to get into that, but all the prereqs is um, be 21 years of age, have a um, good driving record, no criminal history, and then we can see them for them. One more question. How many of your firefighters do a dual job and work on the rescue squad too? And he's on rescue in the fire? Right. Probably two-thirds. Two-thirds of them. Because volunteer rescue and firefighter. Yep. Okay. I'll make the motion for the budget. I've got a motion. I have a second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Bessie, you can have the eye adjust. Uh, residential rates, we yeah. put that in the pay 50 cents. Okay. See how they A little more on the 2% across the board. Uh, also, in your packet ordinance 1508, amending the water and sewer rates for fiscal year 2015 16. That's also 2%. That was also 2% across the board. I have a motion. Motion. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, council member reports as well. Um, I just have a couple of things. Um, I know that you were talking about Judge Carter is up for retirement. I'd like to know when we're going to plan on filling the position and how we're going to transition the new judge um, to do the role of with Judge Carter. That would be that would be something that is going to be discussed in under an executive session on the contractual matter, uh, uh, if, if that's okay. My, my goal to answer in, in public uh, forum here is for you folks to, because once again, judge works for, for counsel. doesn't work for me. Y'all hired the judge, but I would recommend that we try to do something before the end of the summer, maybe have somebody in place early as October. Uh, so they can get involved and go ahead and start getting, because they've got to be, or they have to go to school for X number of weeks and, and take a test. Um, so I, would, I hope we can do that and they be qualified to be a judge prior to Judge Carter retiring. So but we'll get into that a little deeper. And Chief Rogers, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about the promotions for the police department. Yes. Um, I know that y'all had it tested. Um, can you tell me actually what you're promoting? What, what um, positions? We're going to promote, promote a sergeant's position and uh, seven or eight people took the test. Some of them took it so they won't have to take it later on. Just for other positions. So they've got that out of the way. They won't have to retake it next time. So you're saying just one position, 
sergeant position? Ah, uh, right now, as far as I know. There could be another spot. <coughs> That's all I got. The only thing I have is I'm glad to see you're doing the picnics in the park. Yeah, the police yes. department. I think that's great. Congratulations on doing that. I think it's good public relations. Especially with the atmosphere the way it is right now. Absolutely. And follow up on that, uh, and I know he doesn't want the publicity, but Dillon Provision is providing the, the food. Uh, Pepsi providing the food. Yes. correct. That's great. We've got that's community part support of it and, and something we want to do, not just one time and say we've done something, but it's something that the police department uh, wants to be involved in the community. So that's one of the things. That See, you got a cooker and all that? Mm -hmm. um, and the good thing is, is one of our rookie police officers came up with this that's and, right. and that's great that the younger police officers won't be involved in that kind of stuff. So that's a good thing. That's Friday, June twelfth? This coming this coming Friday, yes. Sir. Uh, I can't remember times, but there'll be one done over by the Maple School area for a certain time. Once that time is expired then they'll come over to Calvin Street here on Eleventh Avenue area and do it there. Then I think it maybe goes into Harmon Park and then to Elizabeth Lane, but I don't know. Well, I thought it's all three parks. That's no, four. It's four parks. Yes. So they aren't going to do it currently, or is it separate times? Or yeah, they'll do it separate parks? times. Yeah. Separate times. Uh, update on uh, J uh, Jake and Rich. So what's the status of the you know? He's still under workers' comp. I mean, how is he progressing? I can't tell about that. Glenn, yes, that property that we have to sell in there, is that an entire space? Yes, ma'am. Entire space. Yeah. And on um third and Cal third and um I think that's third and Cal home. Where I put that we put that no parking sign. Mm -hmm. I mean uh, the next block down, the next two or three blocks down, there's a lot of young kids in there. You think we could get a sign for the children that play? The state won't put those up. They won't. No ma'am. Mm -hmm. Um and, and I've asked uh, and I'll use the wellness center as a, an example. Mm -hmm. you know, could they put one up there in front of the wellness center so put the playground? They don't. They only put them up for school zones. And they won't allow so us to no, put them up. None in the neighborhoods? No, ma'am. And they won't allow us to put them up either because it's there right away. And, and they say because of a liability issue. To me, the liability issue would be that you did do something. Yeah. That's all. Another short meeting. Um, I make a motion we go into executive session. So, on the favor. Aye. Thank you.